During the Cold War, Lockheed's F-104 Starfighter revolutionized high-altitude flight. It was deployed as interceptor and tactical fighter for the US Air Force and NATO allies and was known for its futuristic design and powerful engine. It was notable for its slim fuselage, short wings, and a pointed nose when it first flew in 1954. A missile with a man in it, the F-104 was also equipped with a powerful engine to reach speeds of Mach 2.2 and altitude of over 100,000 feet. Despite its agility and speed, the F-104 was famously difficult to fly and had a high accident rate, giving it the moniker Widowmaker. Despite its contentious history, the F-104 remains a symbol of Cold War aviation technology. Kelly Johnson was a Lockheed Corporation aeronautical engineer and a designer who studied at the University of Michigan before joining the company in 1933. Over 40 aircrafts were created by him, including the P-38 Lightning, the P-80 Shooting Star Jet Fighter and the C-16N Constellation. He also created the U-2 spy plane, the first aircraft to fly over 60,000 feet, and the renowned SR-71 Blackbird, which was entirely built of titanium. Following World War II, Aircraft design changed from lightweight fighters to large designs capable of carrying bigger loads over longer distances. Kelly Johnson, on the other hand, went the opposite way, visiting US sites to meet with the experienced fighter pilots following the battle between North and South Korea. These pilots contributed significant information on their combat experience, assisting in the development of the new aircraft with the experience they had encountered with the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15. The MiG-15 was meant to be a strong fighter by being tiny, quick and nimble in battle. Kelly Johns recognized the necessity for a specialized interceptor to confront Soviet fighters. When Johnson returned to the United States in 1952, he and his crew concentrated on performance, striving for a lightweight, powerful engine. Over a hundred different designs were considered before deciding on a design weighing more than 12,000 pounds and powered by a single engine. Lockheed was granted a contract for two prototypes in 1953, with the General Electric J-79 turbojet engine being employed. But owing to restricted availability, the British Wright XJ-65 W6 series was used. The XF-104 prototypes were constructed in 1954 and flew in March at Edward Air Force Base in California. Tony Livier, a Lockheed test pilot, flew the first prototype for about 20 minutes, despite minor gear retraction concerns. The second prototype was damaged during gun trials, but after additional development, the surviving XF-104 was approved by the Air Force in 1955. The F-104 Starfighter was meant to be lightweight and aerodynamic, with a long, thin fuselage and short, missile-like wings. With an extended fuselage and trapezoidal wing shape, the aircraft was composed of aluminum, titanium and stainless steel. The wings were moved back and aft fuselage was elevated, resulting in lifted tail and droop nose to compensate for the high landing speeds caused by the heavily laden wing. To minimize landing speeds, Lockheed developed the Boundary Layer Control System BLCS, and the Starfighter featured a stabilizer installed on the fin to lessen inertia coupling. The wings were inclined downward at a negative dihedral angle, and the aircraft measured 20.9 feet in width, 54.7 feet in length, and 13.4 feet in height. The Starfighter was the first American interceptor capable of sustained speed above Mark II. It had a range of over 1,080 miles, a cervix ceiling of 58,000 feet, and a climb rate of 48,000 feet per minute thanks to its 14,800 pounds thrust, J-79 turbojet engine and afterburner. The Starfighter was a well-armed aircraft. During the 1958 Taiwan Strait Crisis, F-104 Starfighters were deployed for the warfare. On each wingtip was a M61 Vulcan 20mm cannon 
and a Sidewinder DAR-8 missile. External fuel tanks and up to 4,000 pounds of external storage in six hard points are also options. There were over 10 variations available, including the F-104B, C, D, and RF-104G. The F-104s were vital in negotiating a truce with China in late October 1954, and they were also ready for war during the 1961 Berlin Crisis. In November, around 60 starfighters were transported to Europe to serve as an air superiority towards the Soviet Union. In 1965, the F-104 joined the USAF Technical Air Command and took part in Operation Rolling Thunder, a huge assault over Vietnam. Because of their speed and aerodynamics, Soviet-made MiGs in North Vietnamese service avoided confronting F-104 units. In Vietnam, 14 starfighters were destroyed by SAM missiles, anti-aircraft artillery fire, and engine issues. During the Cold War, several U.S. allies, including Germany, Canada, Japan, Italy, and the Netherlands, adopted aircraft. However, the acquisitions of these one F-104s became contentious in 1975, as it was found out that Lockheed officials had paid the other governments to obtain them. West Germany paid the highest price for this aircraft, with over 229 crashing, killing 115 pilots. Pilots of the Luftwaffe began referring it as the Widowmaker. From 1956 until 1994, NASA's Dryden Flank Studies Central deployed Lockheed F-104 Starfighter aircraft for high-speed flying studies. For 38 years, the agency used 11 aircraft, collecting vital data on response control system, role coupling, and handling characteristics. To offer practice for future rocket pilots, one NASA Starfighter was equipped with hydrogen peroxide thruster. During moisture impact tests, the endurance of Space Shuttle thermal protection panels were evaluated on flights aboard a Starfighter. NASA Starfighters have also undertaken safety chase missions to assist sophisticated research aircraft such as the wingless lift-body vehicle flown at Dryden in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The agency's Starfighters have contributed important flight research data on response control system, role coupling and handling characteristics. After nearly 40 years of service, the F-104 Starfighters were extremely essential to NASA's flight research and support aircraft. Kelly Johnson gained various honors and accolades, including the Cloya Trophy and the Medal of Freedom in 1958. He retired from Lockheed in 1975, but continued to serve as a senior vice president until his death in 1980. Thanks for watching. I have more similar videos on my channel that you may like. See you guys in the next video.